Hey everyone, welcome to Aurelia Cast. In the past few episodes, we've gone through a lot of the basics of Aurelia, but today we're going to really try to bring it all together and start going through building a front end for a somewhat more complex blogging application. So this is actually going to take a number of videos to go through, but I think you're going to get the hang of a lot of concepts that we've gone over thus far and see it in a more real application. And you're also going to be introduced to a lot of other concepts and it's everything's really going to start falling into place, I believe, when we start implementing this blog. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is actually clone down a little Git repository that I created, which basically all this Git repository is, is it includes some services that kind of fake a database system. And what it really is, is an in-memory data store. And I'll show you exactly what I mean, but first just follow along. Hopefully you have Git. If you do not, just do a quick Google on how to install Git. And uh, it's really great for source code management. Uh, it's basically essential to be uh, a software developer in a professional setting. So assuming you have Git now, go ahead and type Git clone. And we're going to do HTTPS slash github.com slash Nick Shally. That's me. And we are going to clone down the blog start repository. Just like that. So what it's doing is it's going to clone into a fo folder called blog start. So now we're going to go into that folder. And I am just going to give you a quick introduction to what we what we actually cloned down. So I'm just going to open my code editor. Great. So uh, what you can see in this folder, it's just blog start just has this source folder and within source it has a common folder and within common it has services and it has an auth service and a post service. I'm not going to get into too much detail about these, but for example, if you open up the post service, you can see that, okay, this is exporting a class called post service and we're actually also using auth service. And what this is doing is this is just seeding a little bit of blog data that we can use within our application. So you can see our posts here and it has information like title, body, author, the slug for the post, uh, the tags associated with the post and when the post was created. And I've got three of them. And then I've got these other methods that return the data in certain ways. This is basically all this is doing is kind of simulating the interaction that you might expect to have with uh, with an actual back end. Since this is an Aurelia tutorial, uh, this is a front end based uh, platform. We are not going to worry ourselves too much, at least right now, with designing and implementing a back end. So I'm going to close that and I'm going to go over to auth service. And this is really a, a similar type of thing. Uh, what this is doing is seeding a couple of users for our blog system and then implementing some login, logout, sign up functionality as well. Uh, you should definitely review those. It's kind of interesting. Uh, you can see what I've done it, for both of these. I've actually just ended up returning promises with uh, a, a set timeout method being used. So basically I'm uh, actually simulating some sort of server delay um, just to make it seem more realistic rather than just spitting out the data immediately. At any rate, we can go ahead and close that. And uh, I've intentionally only included the uh, this little bit of the source folder. So we can actually close our code editor and go back to the command line because we actually do want to go ahead and install an Aurelia project. So I can use the Aurelia command line interface and say au new. And I want to make sure I put it in the current folder. So I'm going to use the here flag. And so I'll get a few questions from Aurelia. Uh, I want to use the defaults require JS module loader. I am uh, targeting the web platform. This tutorial is going to use ES next. So we're going to use the Babel transpiler. Uh, we will use the default templating. Uh, I'm not going to do any CSS preprocessor in this um, in this tutorial. 
uh, we're gonna skip unit testing. I always like this note. My code is always perfect anyway. Uh, testing is extremely important, but right now we're not gonna cover it in this series. Uh, and then finally I use Sublime, but uh, you can select whatever. So we are going to uh, install the project, even though the directory is not empty because I did, we did clone down those services. So I'll do yes. And we're gonna install the project dependencies and this will take a little bit of time. So I'll cut back when this is done. Great, so our application has been created. So I can type, at least for me, Subble to open up Sublime Text and take a look. And yeah, we see the application on the left here, uh, everything we might expect. I can open my source folder and see that it started our default application with app, the app component as our one and only component. But I also have this common folder, which we went through before that includes these services, which is basically faking a connection to a backend. Awesome. So we're making a blog and I think a lot of people like to use the bootstrap CSS framework. So what I'm going to do is I am going to find a nice looking blog from bootstrap. And I'm also going to use bootstrap four because I think that's forward thinking kind of like Aurelia. And so what I'm going to do is go to bootstrap and go ahead and click on bootstrap and I'm going to go to an example. And if I scroll down, uh, here we go. The bootstrap blog, this looks pretty nice. So I'm going to use this. So to use bootstrap, we know that bootstrap requires jQuery as a dependency. So let's use NPM to install both jQuery and bootstrap. NPM install jQuery. And if I just typed bootstrap, it would bring in bootstrap three because bootstrap four is in beta. So I have to be explicit. I can say bootstrap at 4.0.0 and it is the third beta. And I'll just save these to my package JSON. So again, I am installing jQuery because it is a, a dependency for Bootstrap and then I'm installing the Bootstrap 4 uh, third beta and then I'm saving them to package.json. I will do that right now. Great, so we know that since we have installed these, they don't automatically get recognized by the Aurelia CLI, so I need to jump into Aurelia project and go to aurelia.json. And again, I need to go into this JSON file and go down to my dependencies and include both jQuery and Bootstrap. We have to remember that order does matter in this section. So I need to bring in jQuery first, and then I need to bring in Bootstrap, but I can't just say that we want Bootstrap. I need to uh, specify more information about it because we know that jQuery is a dependency. So I'm going to use an object here instead and say that the name of this is bootstrap. The path to uh, all of the bootstrap files, and you can either take my word for, for this or actually explore the node modules file, or the, sorry, the, the node modules folder and uh, the path is node modules slash bootstrap slash dis. We know the main file. If we were to be bringing in bootstrap three, we might be saying js slash bootstrap dot min, but we know that bootstrap, or we may not know this by now, but bootstrap four actually has this additional dependency of popper JS. So if we actually bring in the bootstrap bundle, we can just make sure that that additional dependency is included. And therefore, when we declare our dependencies for this, we can just say, okay, it's only jQuery. And we know that we have brought in jQuery already. So that's a dependency. And this will then export the jQuery dependency and the resources. Well, this is a CSS. Uh, th this is a CSS package. So yeah, we need to tell our project that it's going to be making CSS slash bootstrap dot CSS available. And again, that is relative to this path. 
Great, so that was a little bit of work, but now we've brought in uh, both jQuery and Bootstrap, and our Aurelia uh, CLI is going to now know where to find all the information necessary for those. We can then go to our app.html file in the source folder, which will be the initial component that loads, and we can go ahead and require the, uh, the CSS resource. So we will require from, we are requiring this from Bootstrap. And we can just reference our really JSON. So we're requiring CSS slash bootstrap.css. Great, I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna go back to my command line and I'm going to use au run and I'll just use the watch flag so I don't have to keep typing au run. And I just wanna make sure that uh, when I start this up, our default app now looks like it's using the uh, uh, bootstrap for styling. So I'm gonna to go to localhost 9000 Great, and so our hello world now doesn't look like the default font, but in fact, it looks like Bootstrap's default font. So next up, I'm going to look at this blog and say, all right, how can I make my application look like this? Well, I can go ahead and just view the page source and I can basically copy everything within the body tag here. And that's what I will do. I will copy all the way down to the footer here and realizing that I don't need to bring in these scripts at the bottom because that's what we did with NPM. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my application and take out that message, copy in all this good content, and then just bring that out. And here we go. So we have that, I'm gonna save and I am going to bring back up my application. Here we are, and it doesn't quite look right because we haven't brought in the project specific CSS. So if I look back at the source for the template, I can see if I scroll to the top, I can see that we are using this other blog.css file. So I am going to go in, I'm gonna copy that. And because our project previously I had shown you, uh, including all the files in the, the source directory, but because our, our project is getting a little larger, it wouldn't be a bad idea to perhaps within the source directory create a new folder called uh, assets, for example. And then within that, I can create a new folder called maybe styles. And so within assets and styles, then maybe I can create a new file. And I'll just dump all of the content we copied over and save that as blog.css. And so we're just making sure that our source folder is nice and organized. And this becomes tremendously important for, uh, for larger applications. So within our app.html file, I can then go ahead and uh, add another require, except instead of bringing in Bootstrap, we are gonna bring in this custom style. So within source, we are going to assets, styles, and blog.css. So I'll save that. I will hop on over to my browser and go to my uh, localhost 9000. And here we go. It looks exactly like what the example looks like. So we're at a good place here now that we are up and running. Awesome. So the next step I would say is just to think a little bit about what, uh, what we're going to be doing with this application and maybe we can start planning out our navigation. So I'm gonna go back to the, uh, the code and we've got these nav links. I think home is a reasonable one. So we'll leave that, but perhaps we will have a way for people to log in so we can create a login link. Perhaps we'll have a way for people to sign up and we will, so we'll create a sign up link. Uh, if you're signed up, maybe we'll have a new post link. And then finally, maybe we'll have a way for people to log out once they are logged in. And I'll just capitalize these. 
So great, so I'm gonna go to my application now and all right, here's all of our menu options at the top, log in, sign up, new post, log out. Um, I'm sure you're thinking by now, well, you know, this is great, but all these options don't seem to go together. You wouldn't have a login or sign up option if you're already logged in. You wouldn't have a new post option or log out option if you are a guest and you're not signed in. And we'll take all, care of all that later. But uh, rest assured that we will indeed uh, be changing that to conditionally display. So what's the next thing we might want to do? Well, the way this template currently exists, uh, there is no system to tag posts. So maybe I would tag a post as being about Aurelia or being about JavaScript or being a personal post, something like that. But there's no way to do that. And you know, maybe we would actually want to see those in the sidebar as well. So let's go ahead and just create something that looks like a, uh, a reasonable tagging system. So I'm going to go back into my code. And uh, in this sidebar, uh, the about section, if I scroll down and I find uh, somewhere around line 99 is the about section, let's just call that tags. Let's not worry about that being an about section. We will just decide we don't need it. And so we'll create these tags and let's just use the uh, the span element that comes with, uh, with that comes with bootstrap and we'll use we'll use badges for this so let's say class equals badge and badge pill and then I think the info color will be good. So let's use badge info and we'll just call this, uh, let's say there's a tag about Aurelia. And so let's just make a few of these. Aurelia, JavaScript, personal. And these will all be uh, dynamically generated at some point. Um, dogs. Okay, great. So I'm going to go back to our uh, instance and we can see, great, these tags, you know, Aurelia, JavaScript, personal, dogs, that's great. Uh, perhaps we'll actually want those to be clickable. So I'm going to actually edit what I just did and just add uh, an A tag for each of these. Yeah, let's just do, do that. personal dogs. Great. And if I go back to my application, great. These are now clickable, but they don't actually go anywhere. They don't, they don't do anything. That's fine. So that's good. But now perhaps we want to see this within each of our posts as well. So I'm going to go back into the code and I will copy these tags, copy that exact content over to our first post. Uh, perhaps I will put it between the date and the actual content. So let's create a new paragraph element here and just add those tags. I will save and go back. Yeah, that looks fine. I think that looks good. Great. So uh, one other thing I'm going to do uh, really quick is I am going to delete all of the other blog posts except for this first one. So let me go down and find these other blog posts and just get rid of these. There we go. Save that, go back to the page, because we know that as long as we have what one of these is going to look like, then we'll just loop through our data and make sure that it keeps repeating the same type of uh, blog appearance for each post that we have in our system. Great, so I think the last thing I wanna do is uh, implement a router as well, which we've talked about before. So we can probably move through that relatively quickly. I'm going to create a router, but I still want our initial view to be a view of kind of all of our posts. So that will necessitate basically creating this uh, component that will live in our router at the default place. And we can call that just our index post component. I can go back to my uh, 
I can go back to my source and I can create maybe like a post index component at the root. But we had thought that, you know, maybe we would be a little more uh, organized now. So let's create maybe a directory and just call it posts. And in a normal kind of resourceful way, we could within this posts folder, we could create a uh, new component, which would be that HTML and index pair, or, sorry, the HTML and the uh, JavaScript pair that would consist of um, both the uh, view and view, uh, view model. But what we can actually do instead of creating these manually is, I think I mentioned in uh, a, few, a few lessons ago that uh, the Aurelia CLI is pretty powerful. And one really powerful piece of that CLI is something called generators. So you don't actually have to write a lot of the code that we've been writing uh, yourself. You can actually use generators. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So if you go back into your command line interface, and I'm just gonna hop out of uh, watching the application, I am going to generate a component that lists all of our posts. So the way I would do that is use the CLI. And this would go AU, generate. I'm gonna generate a component. And uh, in the resourceful way, we were gonna call this the index component. But we're not going to add it to our source directory. We are going to add it to posts within our source directory. And I'm going to do that. And if I go back to my source code, I can see within the post folder, there's this index.html file that's been generated and this index.js file that's been generated. So it, it actually just created the, uh, the view and the view, uh, the view model for me. I didn't have to do anything. Uh, I didn't have to write any of this code. So as we go through this tutorial, I'm going to definitely be showing you many of these shortcuts so that we don't have to write nearly as much code ourselves and we can defer a lot of it to the CLI. And that is something that a lot of savvy uh, professional developers will do if they can. They will delegate writing a lot of that uh, boilerplate code to a command line tool. So great, we have this, this component. So maybe within our index.html within posts, we are going to go to uh, our app uh, view and we're gonna take the blog post out of there. So let's go ahead and just take out that whole blog post. Great, I cut that out. I'm gonna save, I'm gonna put it in our index HTML file. I'll dent that. So if I then go and start my application back up, we will of course see once it finishes loading and I go online, I give the page a refresh. Yeah, there's no content here because we've removed everything, but we haven't told it that our index file within our posts is going to be the default route. So let's do that right now. Let's go back to our source code and go to our app.html view. And where the post used to be, let's go ahead and just add a router view element. And this tells Aurelia that, okay, we're going to be uh, rendering some components within this router view. Very cool. We also know from our previous lessons that whenever we include the router view, we need to then go to our view model and add a configure router method. So let's do that configure router. And this will take both config and router. we can set the title of the page. So I'm gonna set it to be uh, Nick's blog. And just because I'm using single quotes, I want to uh, make sure I escape any single quote within the string. So it's to be Nick's blog. And then I'm going to map my first route. So I'm going to say config.map and within this config map, I'm going to pass an array of routes. My first one being the home, the home route. So route is going to be empty. So this will be what I go to first. The name of this route is going to be home. 
the module ID. Well, where, where are we going to go to get this route? We're going to go to posts and index. And then finally, the title will be all posts. Great. So I've configured my route. And I have my router view here. And I set up my default route within posts slash index. So if I go back to the, uh, the browser and I give it a refresh, I can see, great, we have now created a router and we've created our first route. And so it looks exactly like it did before, except everything within this area is now going to be able to change. And we are going to keep everything here and everything on the sidebar. We're gonna keep that the same and just basically be changing content within this area here. So I think this is a great place to stop. We just covered a lot of what our first uh, tutorials included, but we did it pretty quickly. So feel free to rewatch if you need to. And we are going to start making this blog a little more dynamic in the next tutorials. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you subscribe and uh, leave some feedback and we'll talk to you next time.